morning everyone. Good morning sir. Okay, let us see which are the important articles from today's the Hindu newspaper 9th June 2022. Look at the first page RBI raises interest rate to tame inflation. So this is second such uh, uh, increase in the interest rate. Last month uh, we have seen uh, that RBI had increased the interest rates or policy rates. Now uh, with the 50 basis points it has increased that repo rate we can say. <coughs> we'll find out the details. There is one editorial related to this development. So yes, uh, that editorial also we have to discuss from GS3 paper economy part. Right. Now come to page number 8 directly editorial page that inflation long shadow this is what we are talking from GS3 paper economy part the context is RBI has increased uh, we can say the interest rate here. Now the other two articles for, for let us say the lead article vicious domestic politic, politics and foreign policy shocks. The article is fine but uh, see a lot of criticism is done of government let us say foreign policy and that criticism is not to be written in the answer such kind of language we can say okay although the writer writes very good articles from po foreign policy perspective but uh, we should find uh, let us say take selective inputs from certain articles only right so we will skip this article particular article on left hand side bottom uh, safe foods the context of this article is recent uh, state food safety index was released we covered that from prelims perspective right so that is sufficient that question will be from prelims perspective only so, the question in mains examination will not be there on food safety particularly only example purpose yes we can use that data, data index data okay that we can use there now on page number 10 text and context page the Ukraine war and the global food crisis. Now this is important from GS3 paper economy, GS2 paper IR. In detail explanation at one place only how this Ukraine war is impacting the global food supply. Okay, the disruption in global food supply, how it is happening because of this Ukraine war, some da data facts is mentioned. It is very very important for our examination. Okay, then on right hand side, the future of Indian secularism. Now, why it is in news? Recent developments of the ruling party members were expelled by the party. Yes, uh, due to certain comments on the Prophet Muhammad, yes, uh, and the Islam religion, that controversy was created. Although that is not important for us, but you should know that secularism. It is part of we can say GS1 paper also society and GS2 paper polity part. Right. So <clears throat> Indian secular, secularism how it is different from the western secularism. At the same time in India what do you mean by constitutional secularism. Now very good article is written by Raju Bhargava in 2020 and that article is repeated here in this article exactly copy pasted okay so 12th august 2020 uh, we had done at that time the hindu analysis to wahi article fir se likha hai context sip change hai okay but it is relevant uh, from the essay perspective also there can be essay related to secularism here but here the context is a conflict uh, Yes, that, that context is there at present, the different kind of controversies going on related to religion, religious aspect. But the discussion is core, on a core topic of Indian secularism or constitutional secularism. That input uh, we will take here from GS2 paper polity part as well as essay paper. Now on page number 12, ahead of sowing season, Kharif MSP minimum support price announced by the government okay so yes uh, of how many let's say crops or all 14 kharif crops uh, this msp has been increased and you should know that uh, what are the basics of msp from pre prelims perspective right so 
on the recommendation of which commission it is announced and all, how many crops are covered, which are these crops that are covered, it is very very important for our prelims examination economy part. Now when there will be discussion related to mains aspect GS3 paper economy part, the, the issues associated with MSP, then we should discuss from mains perspective. Here just announcement is there. If suppose tomorrow there is editorial, then we will discuss from men's perspective related to MSP. Okay, so it is MSP topic is relevant to both prelims as well as men's examination. In prelims, they, the factual aspects are important. Right, in men's examination, analytical aspects are important and when the farmers protest were going on, their one demand was making this as a statutory provision. Legalizing MSP at present it is not statutory provision, right? Yes, so you should know that it is in news in last one or two years. So there can be question in mains examination also. Okay? Yes. Alag alag temples or states or locations hume pata hona chahiye kyunki prelims mein they are asking questions related to temples. Last year they asked about Somna temple. This year, sorry, and the, uh, the Ramanuja, let's say, statue has been unveiled. So, uske upar ek question tha. Basically, uh, the, the 18,000 pandits visited Khir Bhavani temple. Okay, so it is, uh, we can say, important deity for Kashmiri pandits in Jammu and Kashmir. So, Khir Bhavani temple is there located in Kashmir, Srinagar. Theek hai, to aapko ye yaad rakhna hai ki kahan pe location hai. Prelims perspective say. Okay? Khir Bhavani temple. <clears throat> because Prime Minister himself had, let's say, tweeted or something online. Theek hai, toh, ab jab, jo Prime Minister koi bhi cheez, agar inauguration kar rahe, announce kar rahe, toh iske baad mein yaad rakhna hai ki wo hamare liye prelims ke liye important hai. Okay? Yes, for prelims from current aspect as well as basics of that. ठीक है, yes. Now, page number thirteen is political. On fourteen, yes. India Vietnam sign mutual logistic agreement. Okay, so what is that mutual ag uh, logistic agreement? Uh, we'll cover from IR section GS two paper. Then National Highway Authority of India's road laying feet enters uh, World Guinness Book of Record. Okay, so where it has happened, how many kilometers were covered, in how much time, again miscellaneous perspective, in prelims there can be question. Okay? Yes. Maybe they have the chance to ask between the areas. Hmm? Areas they will be asked. No, they will ask location and all. Okay, prelims examination. Yes, but that is miscellaneous part. There are, when we say miscellaneous, there are less chances that UPC will ask. Because it is not directly related to syllabus. ठीक है? Yes. Willing to work with India to help Sri Lanka, says China. That is fine. So, ऐसा होगा नहीं, right? First of all, they should work with each other for, you know, resolving the issues between each other, then help the third country. Okay, so let us go in detail about <clears throat> first article is related to the Ukraine war and its impact on global food supply, right? So, <clears throat> how serious is the food crisis that is there at present? First thing you should know that there is galloping retail inflation at present all around the world not only in developing countries or underdeveloped countries but also in developed countries like us and uk uh, very high levels of retail inflation which are fueled by food prices high food prices okay so all economies are facing this problem second thing you should know that the problem of hunger and food insecurity Especially those countries in Africa, like Ethiopia is there, <coughs> Somalia is there, South Sudan is there. 
these countries are already conflict well, we can say prone countries and they are drought prone countries also and they were they are largely dependent on import and we can say grants of these food grains by different countries but now because of this issue that is going on these countries may face severe hunger and food insecurity this is announced by we can say that food and agriculture organization fao okay so we can say that overall the 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 situation is precarious all around the world then how important are russia and ukraine for global food security now here you should know three things first is that related to wheat okay so when we talk about wheat russia russia exports about 20% of world exports of wheat and ukraine 8% of world's export so together it is more than 25% of world's export by these two countries so it is getting impacted the wheat you should know that wheat is a staple food for staple food more than 35% of population world population staple food means that is part of daily diet primary food yes primary food that is consumed okay staple food for more than 35% also you should know that more than 50 countries are dependent on ukraine and russia for imports of wheat more than 50 countries in the world they are dependent on this so they will face more problem now second thing you should know is exports of corn okay and ukraine is again fourth largest exporter fourth largest exporter of corn and third you should know is sunflower again we can say that ukraine is the largest largest exporter of sunflower okay so when we talk about let's say global food security aspect these two countries are important from these aspect exactly write this in your answer jaise hai waise hi likhna hai isse hame samajh mein aata hai kuch facts jo hai wo important hote hai answer mein then what is causing the crisis let us understand that first of all you should know the present situation of this war you can see that the <clears throat> the dark color here is russian military controlled area of now ukraine present day ukraine so you can see that eastern and southern part is largely uh, we can uh, say it is controlled by russia now and remaining two important port cities odessa and mykolaiv they are yet to be we can say controlled they are still controlled under ukraine but remaining kherson and mariupol these two important port locations in black sea or sea of azov this is what sea of azov okay as a part of black sea so they are very important locations for export of food grains from these port locations to world kahan se export hota hai to wo yahan se export hota hai but now major port cities are now controlled by russia and the remaining two are there but there is there are problems here what are problems two problems are there for export of food grains from these two ports one is that ukraine have underwater mines at these ports so as to stop the invasion by russia and control of these port cities unhone kya kiya hua hai underwater mines rakhi hui hai wahan pe already they whatever they invasion all occupied places have been placed land mines sir yes land mine is different here we can say that the underwater mines are there so that whatever the invasion of russia that is blocked there but because of this what is happening the commercial ships cannot be docked here because of these mines commercial ships have more weight so that will touch the underwater mines 
so that's why the export of food grains first second is that russia has some kind of let's say its naval forces docked here to wo block karke rakha hai russia ne black sea ka black sea is completely blocked by russia now so it will not allow the passage of food grains through black sea also so this aspect you should know right along with that th these are the causes you should know and then uh, we know that june month is the harvest time period there in ukraine and whatever the food grains that will be produced if they are not allowed to pass through this then there are two routes available which are these one through north through belarus and then reaching to baltic countries and from that shipping can be done and other route is from this side there is poland but there are challenges we know that belarus is ally of russia now and there are sanctions on belarus also along with russia okay and us and nato countries are not allowing let's say waiver of those sanctions for passing of food grains through belarus so that option is gone second is poland this is feasible option but what is problem here is the 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 we can say that the nature of railways that are there in ukraine and poland they are having different width they are having different width and because of that what needs to happen here whatever the food grains will come here they needs to be loaded in separate wagons yes so that is again cumbersome time consuming and costly process so the the efficient and economical way was this one only this one then second thing you should know is that because of sanctions on russia also the such kind of problems are happening why food crisis is happening because of sanctions on russia also first thing you should know that russia is also exporter of food grains okay exporter of food grains like wheat 20% of the global export but you should know that the food grains are not having sanctions okay the food grains are not having sanctions but the other sanctions on monetary aspect or financial aspects they are impacting investment in agriculture in russia overall russian economy is facing problem how investment in agriculture will happen production overall in russia will reduce that is getting affected second thing is it is world's major or largest we can say exporter of fertilizers now important input for agriculture or around the world and yes again the fertilizers are not part of sanctions but still the investment in fertilizer depend on the overall health of economy that is not happening so overall production of fertilizers is also coming down this is how we should know and the, the whatever the limited supply of fertilizer is there its cost is very high theek hai to we also in india facing this problem overall well, let's say prices of fertilizers at world market has increased this is also creating global food crisis kyunki isse kya hoga india jaise country may be फूड ग्रेन प्रोडक्शन कम होगा वाई प्राइसेस ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर सर है अंडरस्टूड नाउ व्हाट इज वे आउट इज देयर एनी वे आउट यस देयर आर लेट्स से ऑप्शंस ऑप्शंस रिलेटेड टू व्हाट वी कैन डू हियर इज लेट्स से द फूड कॉरिडोर इज बीइंग एक्सप्लोर्ड एंड रशिया हैज प्रपोज द फूड कॉरिडोर दैट इट इट सेड दैट वी विल अलाउ passing of food grains from black sea only when the west will lift the sanctions on it only when it will lift the sanctions on it but the west is not doing that okay nato countries uh, led by we can say us they are not doing that and that's why ukraine is in dilemma now theek hai to yahan pe jo main option hai wahi problematic hai right now okay and the negotiations between ukraine and russia still going on related to export of food grains but no final solution is uh, we can say finalized yet
fine so there is we can say no clear way out at present so but in near future we can expect that there will be some kind of negotiations because even western countries are dependent on food grains no they are also facing food inflation so there will be some kind of diplomatic solution to this fine okay rbi raises rates to tame inflation so how much uh, let's say rate is increased 50 basis point and now it is 4.9 percent in a bid to slow inflation which is estimated at average of 7.5 percent in the current quarter of april to june so you can see that during the pandemic time we have seen reduced policy rates by rbi so that there is more money supply in the economy and it will act as a boost to the economy and economic growth but now you can see that since last month there is increase in the policy rate ye jo aapko trend pata hona chahiye and this has been decreasing before we can say pandemic also theek hai ab ye decline kyu ho raha tha policy rates were why they were reduced even before pandemic because we were experiencing slow down in economic growth since 2018 19 itself let's say the long impact of demonetization and gst and overall global slow down also so that's why the favorable policy by monetary policy committee or rbi was there reduced interest rate but what what happened in last 2 3 years this has led to increased money supply in the economy liquidity increased and because of that there is high inflation one of the factor and what rbi can do it can deal with money supply with these policy rates so that's why it is now increasing those policy rates okay so <clears throat> now what will be the impact of increase in the policy rate yes it will increase the borrowing cost across the board so that means the borrowing means loans will be costly loans from the commercial bank then from those seeking loans to buy the cars and homes also that will be costly and msme firms looking to raise capital their borrowing again it will be costly but it will result into less money supply and this uh, we can expect that in long term or medium term we can say the inflation will come down okay yes no that is that will not be affected but that depends on how the commercial banks are working that depends on commercial banks lending rate huh. only of new loans yes lending rate they will largely change here now <clears throat> what are the factors ex let's say given by monetary policy committee on the inflation outlook first we should know that the ukraine war is going on and subsequent impact on different economies increased crude oil prices increased edible oil prices increase transport cost because of this increased electricity prices and all this act as a input cost for production purpose this is leading to inflation this is leading to inflation so overall commodity prices at the world level they are also high when they are imported and used as a input or raw material again we can say that it is leading to high input cost transportation cost due to fuel prices it is getting added okay let us analyze the situation here now mpc has pointed the reference to growing stagflation concerns that are amplifying volatility in global financial markets now we learned about stagflation recently it is stagnant economic growth along with high inflation this is actually not normal situation it is abnormal situation why because 
generally what should happen the high inflation is associated with high economic growth low inflation is associated with low economic growth but here the low economic growth is associated with high inflation rate and low economic growth means loss of jobs and high unemployment rate this correlation high unemployment rate and high inflation levels but basically that is stagflation that is happening okay so all around the world there are concerns of stagflations then while rbi has made brave to retain its april forecast for gdp growth rate in the country for current fiscal at 7.2% citing the reasons as ongoing recovery including in contact intensive services and expected boost to rural consumption from rain spurred from kharif sowing but there are riders here riders like for example in first 7 days or 8 days of monsoon we have deficient monsoon okay so this year's let's say start of monsoon is below normal 37% below normal start of monsoon that should act as a caution and further it will lead to high inflation okay so this is one thing then it is the headwinds from accelerating inflation and the resultant erosion of purchasing power of consumers that the world bank has cited on 7th june when it cut down the forecast of india's gdp growth for this year to 7.5% we covered this day before yesterday this news world bank had cut down our forecast to 7.5% and the reasons mentioned is inflation levels high inflation levels which is reducing the purchasing power of consumers because the disposable amount available with the people is reducing their purchasing power is reducing this is also as a result of currency depreciation rupee depreciation usse kya ho jata hai purchasing power of that money is reducing understood okay they are getting the salary but they are unable to purchase yes because the overall prices are very high but salary is same yes okay now moving on yes the future of indian secularism so let us discuss this article and let me tell you that all of you should be reading this article at home for essay perspective very very good article kabhi bhi rajiv bhargava ka article aata hai the hindu newspaper pe to wo padhna hi hai from ethics perspective essay and gs2 paper polity and society part also right so yes secularism has paid heavy price in our country for being at the center of public and political discourse it has been used misused and abused from time to time secularism now let us understand that indian constitutional secularism is swallowed up by party political secularism in india if we talk about the basics what is secularism see western concept of secularism is basically the strict separation between the state and religion they will not they will not interfere with each other this is western concept of secularism but indian concept of secularism is like it goes sarva dharma samabhav okay so that means state will respect all religions equally at the same time the second aspect you should know of indian secularism is that state uh, will keep all religions at arms length that it will not intervene in the religious matter in day to day aspect in pity manner but rather it will keep the religion at arms length means whenever it is required it is necessary then it will it will intervene that is indian secularism ye aapko clearly pata hona chahiye okay yes so here the constitutional secularism is marked by at least two features in india critical respect for all religion this is what we are talking first part and second is the indian state abandons strict separation but keeps principal distance from all religions this wording we should use in our answer principal distance keeping the religion at arms length just to only maintain yes 
so it follows that our state must respectfully leave the religion alone but also intervene when religious groups promote communal disharmony and discrimination on the grounds of religion yes uh, you can uh, let's say give other examples simply not this one no that that is fine but what we should talk here is about the communal disharmony the discriminatory aspects the dominance of majority religion on minority aise wordings use kariye theek hai political party ka naam nahi likhna hai answer mein theek hai this should be very much clear fine yes now this constitutional secularism cannot be sustained by governments alone that cannot be sustained by governments alone it requires some kind of support from judiciary first second free and independent media and third the the alarmed or alert citizenry or civil society ye jo hai na ye collective commitments from impartial judiciary media civil society activist and alert citizenry all should fight for protecting constitutional secularism okay alone the state will not be able to do that this is what we talk civil society activist okay and the overall let's say people common people now party political secularism party political secularism born around 40 years ago is nefarious doctrine practiced by all political parties it is not like single political party but all political parties use religion as you know method to garner votes okay and including so called secular forces this secularism has dispelled all values from core idea and replaced them with opportunism so basically all political parties use religion for as an opportunistic tool for you know garnering votes in the uh, elections opportunistic distance that is engagement or disengagement but mainly opportunistic alliance with the religious communities particularly for the sake of immediate electoral benefits isko hum bolte hai party polit political secularism you can use these words in essay paper okay now what should be the way forward to this a shift of focus from politically led project to socially driven movement for justice and this socially driven movement is basically media civil society and citizens this will be driven by these three pillars okay so the shift from we can say politically led project that is from political parties or government or even we can say judiciary that should shift from this to socially driven movement for justice the people should come forward to demand the justice okay so ye ek first shift hona chahiye second is shift of emphasis from inter religious to intra religious issues why it is said inter religious issues creates the problem okay the majority minority dominance and all these things but the focus should be on intra religious matlab within religion what are the issues if we talk about hindu religion or muslim religion or any religion many issues or practices that are there within the religion they are discriminatory especially gender discrimination right or some of these practices may not be essential to the religion and they are impacting the people's right fundamental rights so they should be focused here rather than inter religious issues okay understood to ye aap way forward mein likh sakte hai and ultimately in conclusion according to nehru uh, the first prime minister of india secularism was not only project of civic friendship among the religious communities but also of opposition to religion based caste and gender oppressions an endeavor at the heart of our own socially driven freedom and equally oriented reform movements in 19th century so socio religious movements of 19th century what they focus largely they focus intra religious issues within religion they focused on reforming religion right so for hindu religion there was 
different kinds of social religious movement for muslim religion there was uh, aligarh movement was there for hindu religion arya samaj movement was there i am giving just examples okay for sikh religion there was separate movement for parsi religion there was separate movement so from this we understand that <clears throat> basically it is not always the inter religious harmony but let's say secularism also includes solving these intra religious aspects issues fine okay yes now so, but uh, these uh, movements will be dynamic so how we can able to control like that is uh, which movements you are saying if any community uh, movements or community rights we it's a dynamic part so how we can able to tackle them see in past also you should know that such kind of discriminatory practices for example even judiciary has come to the rescue of let's say women from muslim community like uh, their rights were violated suppose we if ta- you can take the example of triple talaq you can take the example of uh, hindu religion and you can talk about the temple entry movement so sabri mala issue you can give the example how but this is religion no okay so within religion how this issues are tackled ye bahut important hai theek hai so judiciary has from time to time come to the rescue in intra religious issues theek hai yes now india vietnam signed memorandum of understanding on mutual logistic support during the ongoing visit of our defense minister to vietnam they have also signed the joint vision statement on india vietnam defense partnership towards 2030 okay yes let us understand now india has signed several logistic agreements including with all countries and france singapore south korea as well as with us lemoa is there signed in 2016 different def- defense agreements are there with us for uh, let's say framework agreements are there one of them is lemoa now logistic agreements are administrative arrangements facilitating access to military facilities for exchange of fuel and provisions on mutual agreement simplifying logistical support and increasing operational turnaround of military when operating away from india for example suppose vietnam military or armed forces they are operating near india or indian ocean region so immediately in, they can you know come to indian Uh, we can say whatever the ports or let's say arm establishments are there for logistic purpose refueling and all like same manner indian let's say arm forces when they are in south china sea so they can go to vietnam now and get refueled or get logistic support this is important right because we have interest in south china sea okay yes now both ministers also agreed for early finalization of 500 million dollars defense line of credit extended to vietnam by india this is also good thing recently you should know that vietnam has agreed to procure which missile brahmos missile from india theek hai to wo bhi ek cheez aapko pata honi chahiye then our defense minister announced gifting two simulators and monetary grant towards setting up of language and it lab at air force officers training school for capacity building of vietnamese armed forces also you should know that background india vietnam share comprehensive strategic partnership since 2016 and defense cooperation is key pillar of this partnership also vietnam is important pillar of our act east policy act east policy recently we talked about it right yes <clears throat> so ir section c a developments hai ahead of sowing kharif msp revealed so yes all 14 crops for which or kharif crops for which let's say the msp is announced before sowing season has been increased in the range of 4% to 8% in the range of 4% to 8% yahan pe increase in msp diya hua hai aur paddy या राइस के लिए हंड्रेड रुपीज इंक्रीज किया हुआ है ओके एंड यस द हाइस्ट एट परसेंट इंक्रीज इज देयर इन जोवा टू वराइटीज ऑफ जोवार ओके पर क्विंटल 
it is per quintal msp is per quintal this amount per quintal they increase 100 rupees ha yes they, uh, they increase you can see that here the facts are mentioned like msp for paddy which is which was 1940 per quintal last year this is increased by 100 rupees ye jo hai 100 rupees se increase kiya hai also the government said that despite of global increase in prices of fertilizers this year we are giving subsidy of worth 2.1 lakh crore rupees this is double of what government was paying last year so of course global prices of fertilizers are increased but that is not being passed to uh, let's say farmers how fertilizer subsidy is given in india quickly whether it is direct subsidy or indirect subsidy it is indirect subsidy it is not directly given to the farmers it is given to the manufacturers no it is given to manufacturers directly okay manufacturers in india so whatever the amount or the market price is there so that market price and let's say the manufacturing price of the fertilizers by the manufacturers whatever the difference that is decided that is given by the government to them so the fertilizer prices are fixed by the government and government is following what type of let's say subsidy for fertilizer nutrient based fertilizer uh, we can say subsidies that are given and whatever the market price is there that difference is given to manufacturer not to the farmers okay yes so electricity only direct subsidy no electricity is also indirect electricity is also indirect subsidy okay the money is paid to the discoms by the government not to the farmers okay so that is also indirect rather you can say that let's say pm kisan scheme yes, ha ah, that is direct msp is direct that is directly paid to the farmer right dvd and msp ha ah, yes now about msp it is given to 23 crops together for uh, we can say uh, kharif and rabi crops <coughs> right so which are these crops covered why uh, msp is announced it is announced Uh, we can say to protect the interest of the farmers from any kind of crop failure okay so it is kind of insurance that is given by the government that we will procure your food grains if suppose the prices are falling uh, in the market theek hai to isse below agar niche jaate to government makes sure that they are procuring uh, all the produce from the farmers at this price it gives incentive for the farmer to produce that particular crop ओके okay? तो हर साल जब एमएसपी आता है अगर एक पर्टिकुलर क्रॉप पे एमएसपी बढ़ा दिया तो फार्मर्स जो है उस क्रॉप को ग्रो करना शुरू करते हैं सेकंड थिंग इंपॉर्टेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एमएसपी इज दैट द सफिशिएंट फूड ग्रेन्स टू एंश्योर फूड सिक्योरिटी एंड सप्लाई ऑफ फूड ग्रेन्स थ्रू प्रीडियस टू द पुअर एंड मार्जिनल सेक्शन ऑफ सोसाइटी पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम सो सफिशियंट बफर स्टॉक नीड्स टू बी मेंटेन सो फॉर दैट पर्पज सो फूड सिक्योरिटी एस्पेक्ट so these are twin objectives of msp now which crops are covered seven types of cereals paddy wheat maize bajra jowar ragi and barley then five types of pulses chana arhar dal urad dal moong dal and masoor dal then seven oil seeds rape seed or mustard groundnut soya bean then sunflower sesame and so, uh, we can say uh, safflower and niger seed then four commercial crops cotton sugarcane copra and raw jute theek hai copra kya hota hai coconut, coconut. coconut ka jo upar ka coconut. cover hota hai na dry yes dry coconut now msp is announced by the government msp is announced by the government that is final decision is taken by the government but it is taken on the recommendation of which commission commission for agriculture cost and prices this is statutory body cacp is a statutory body 
you should know about this and msp have no statutory backing so it is not the right of the farmers to demand the msp okay it is not statutory right here fine okay now finally national highway of authority of india road laying feet enters guinness book तो कौन सा है ये और कहां पर हुआ है 75 किलोमीटर्स ऑफ रोड कंस्ट्रक्टेड कंटिन्यूसली इन 105 जीरो फाइव आवर्स थर्टी थ्री मिनट्स और नेशनल हाईवे बिटवीन अमरावती टू अकोला डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स इन महाराष्ट्र विदर्भा रीजन ऑफ महाराष्ट्र अमरावती टू अकोला ओके इट वाज इंप्लीमेंटेड बाय 720 वर्कर्स कंटिन्यूसली वर्किंग and they have completed this feat and this feat has been entered into guinness world book of records so from miscellaneous perspective you should know about this what should be answer क्विकली हाँ यस सो इट इज आस्किंग इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट अबाउट एम एस पी सिंपली सी यर इट इज अनाउंस एज अ पार्ट ऑफ स्टैचुटरी प्रोविजन इट इज इन करेक्ट नो इट इज नॉट स्टैचुटरी प्रोविजन टू अनाउंस एम एस पी इट इज एग्जीक्यूटिव डिसीजन द प्राइस एट विच द गवर्नमेंट प्रोक्यूर्स दैट क्रॉप फ्रॉम द फार्मर इफ द मार्केट प्राइस फॉल्स दिस इज वॉट एम एस पी इज no csp is statutory body which recommends that msp amount but announcing msp by the government is not the part of any law okay so that's why we should understand there is no statutory provision here d is correct answer then such kind of questions are asked by upsc uh, uh, let's say five six options will be given and they are asking crops jaise is bar unhone kya pucha tha crops dekhe wo which of them are leguminous plants aisa pucha tha na nitrogen fixation is done by which of the following plants yes it is difficult to remember 23 crops but how to remember them you divide them in terms of coarse food grains and pulses oil seeds and cash crops jo humne divide kiya tha theek hai to basically all of them are there okay all of them are there d is the correct answer let me again show that to you which crops are covered see seven types of cereals और कोर्स ग्रेन्स लाइक पैडी वीट मेज बाजरा जवार ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑल मेजर क्रॉप्स दे आर कवर्ड हियर देन फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ पल्सेस चना दाल अरहर दाल ये हमारे डेली ईटिंग हैबिट्स में होता है ना वो सारा कवर्ड है सेवल ऑयल सीड्स आर देयर एंड फोर कमर्शियल क्रॉप्स आर देयर फाइन यू शुड ऑल्सो नो दैट द शुगर केन एम एस पी इज कॉल्ड एज एफ आर पी ओके शुगर केन एम एस पी इज कॉल्ड एज एफ आर पी सो फेयर एंड रिमिनेटिव प्राइस एफ आर पी दैट इज अनाउंस फॉर शुगर केन एंड रिमेनिंग दैट इज एम एस पी ओके एनी क्वेश्चन फाइन लेट अस स्टॉप वेलकम टू लुकमान आई एस स्टडी जनरल स्टडीज विद लुकमान आई एस फॉर बिल्डिंग कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव नॉलेज GS paper 2 and 4 will be taken by S Ansari and other papers will be covered by renowned faculties. Live classes are as effective as offline classes. The classes are highly interactive in nature. Your doubts and queries will be addressed and there will be dictation of notes. In the last 10 years, Lukman IS has set up a niche in the field of UPSC guidance. 